Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com, and we are going to talk about the politics of Bill 6. Uh, today I am joined by Ian Brody. He is Associate Professor, Law and Society Program with the University of Calgary, and some of you may know his name. He was, uh, as well, the former Chief of Staff for former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, welcome today, Ian. How are you doing? Good to talk to you, Sean. Okay, so what else could we possibly talk about on Real Agriculture this week besides Bill 6? Uh, and uh, as you sit back uh, in your role as a researcher in the area of politics and some of your uh, government background, what are some of your impressions from afar? Well, I think uh, there's two things going on here, Sean, we have to pay uh, attention to. It's still a new government, uh, uh, new to the responsibilities of uh, of government after a long period with uh, with the PCs in charge, and they decided to give the lead on this Bill Six issue to the Labor Department rather than to uh, the folks over in Agricultural Alberta. I think that's compounded the difficulty of trying to get their ducks lined up here. It's not strange to have a piece of legislation come that's very general table in the legislature with a lot of open language that would be sorted out by regulation later after the bill had passed. But in this case, uh, I don't think it's clear that the, that the consultation with the agricultural sector, the folks in both the farming and the ranching communities that are going to be affected by this, has been quite tied down yet. And that's not strange. The people who have all those connections and all of that uh, uh, social network uh, in the uh, in the farming and, and ranching communities are over at agriculture in Alberta and not not in the labor department. Yeah, and, and there's been a lot of criticism that's come from people saying that uh, they're going to pa- try to pass a bill without the regulations figured out, and people saying like, you know, how can they possibly do that? It's interesting to hear you say that it's not exactly that uncommon. No, it's not uncommon. I mean, uh, especially in the area of uh, of uh, workplace uh, safety, where regulations change over time as the challenges in regulating workplace safety uh, inevitably uh, change over change over time. But in this case, you know, uh, I was a little bit surprised that the premier's letter from last week uh, didn't have a clear commitment about what the consultations were going to look like, who was going to be at the table. For those consultations, I mean, the the uh, the devil's going to be in the details of the regulations that are that are adopted here, and uh, I, yeah, I, I think to 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 put this on a on a smoother path uh, for the government means they're going to, they're going to have to concede something on the on the consultative process. Well, and as you mentioned, clearly they were maybe possibly caught off a li- they were caught a little off guard based on they didn't expect this kind of reaction. Um, we've got you know thousands and hundreds of people showing up at rallies. The the town halls have been and some of them have been poor performances by both sides, farmers and the government. Um, when when you're caught off guard, and this is such a contentious issue, where is that kind of line of hey, we know this is good for you, trust us, versus this is what the people want, and we're going to forge ahead. Well, look, on this front, uh, Sean, I think uh, certainly the communications from the from the officials that are responsible for drafting out these regulations from the labor side uh, have been confusing. Uh, they've left uh, a lot of questions uh, uh, unanswered. And in, in, a, in a space like this, in a policy area like this, where you're facing well-organized, uh, uh, I- I- intensive uh, local associations with local links in the farming and, and ranching communities, the government's going to have to rebuild some trust. Rebuilding some trust here means <clears throat> being much clearer and much more timely with the communications. I think the, the Premier went some way to acknowledging that in her letter last week. Now is what they're going to move quickly on. What what are these regulations actually going to look like? Uh, what, how much when, when is the uh, implementation going to start? Uh, what pieces are they going to start with in 2016? And are there some pieces that are best put off a little bit to make sure that they have the chance to grow into the communities and, uh, and and listen to what's going on and explain a little more clearly what it is they really intend to do? Going forward here, we were mentioning uh, before we started recording about you know how we've got QR77, we've got 630 Ched, our, our two big uh, provincial news talk stations talking about this issue. 
At what at what point does she start to get concerned about her brand as premier with the urban population? Look, uh, you know, uh, the government's Premier Notley's inherited uh, a difficult situation here. There's no question about that. Uh, the main oil and gas business in the province uh, is facing a very challenging time. In, in sense, the most challenging time in 20 or 25 years, maybe 20 years. Uh, so she's got all sorts of difficult problems uh, on that side of her on that side of her agenda. She's trying to get some infrastructure programs out the door. She's trying to get some new uh, government strategy uh, out the door between now and a budget sometime in the spring. Uh, not, I'm not sure that this is uh, this is an issue that she needs to bite off right now. Uh, when there's lot, you know, the situation, the, the workplace safety situation on uh, on farms uh, has been left as it is for many years. I think we have an idea of what direction the government wants to move in here. So we've got another three and a half years in government, right? Uh, three and a half years is some time uh, to take uh, a, a few months. Uh, to go around and rebuild some of the uh, some of the trust and some of the common communications here to make sure the regulations are done right. Uh, the, any new government's got a thousand challenges on its plate. They're trying to get up to speed on uh, carbon tax, on the future of the oil and gas industry, on uh, economic diversification issues, on trying to make sure the, the balance is, the budget isn't too far out of balance here. That's an awful lot on the plate of a relatively small cabinet that's still relatively new to government. And I know that I was in the same situation with Mr. Harper in 2006. Uh, I think at some point uh, they'll be looking for somebody here to put this on a, on a, on a slower pass uh, to try and take some of the heat off the issue here because really some of the uh, communications they've had about what they intend to do uh, haven't been all that clear and they've, they've created problems that weren't necessary. Yeah, and that you know that's been a, what a lot of the industry at this point is sort of saying is that listen, it's it's not about you know there is a hashtag kill Bill Six. I, I don't think it's really about that for a lot of the industry and a lot of the uh, more moderate base of farmers. It's about let let why not pump the brakes here, slow down, let's do that, let's really have some cons- consultations. But it does appear like hey, we've had forty years of conservatives. We are going to make this happen now. Look. Uh... You know, the NDPs uh, traveled in the uh, political opposition benches for an awfully long time. And uh, I think we understand that the the, uh, the core supporters of the NDP have been frustrated for a long time uh, watching 40 years of PC government. Look, uh, when I was like, joined Mr. Harper when we were elected in 2006, it's been 13 years in opposition benches in much the same space. So, uh, so I understand that. Um, but the economic situation in the province is tough. The policy challenges mounting up and the fiscal challenges are mounting. They're tough. They're going to make tough decisions at some point have to be made, uh, are going to have to be made. And that's, that's not going to be easy work. Uh, it's a matter of you know, where do you want to put your foot on the gas and where do you want to move a little more slowly on all the issues that are facing the provincial government. And uh, so I was uh, a, a bit surprised. I don't think that, that last week's uh, uh, open letter put this on a, on a quieter pass where you can take a, a measured approach over the course of a couple of years to try and bring some improvements to uh, to workplace safety in farms and ranches. Yeah, and, and you know, part of the criticism has been is that you know there's amendments that are being talked about that are uh, in, in discussions, and a lot of it hasn't been really figured out. Even as of yesterday, uh, MLA Bruce Hinckley, who's um, MLA with Wetaskiwin Camrose, part of uh, Premier Notley's party, is you know is quoted as saying at the Camrose meeting, it is difficult as a politician answering questions, much like standing in quickstand as the target and intentions of the bill are constantly changing. This is somebody from our own party saying, ooh, boy, this feels, uh, I don't even have all the information. Well, if you compare, Sean, <clears throat> what's going on here for Bill 6, to what the government is doing on the oil and gas royalty review and on the carbon tax side. Whether you like what they're doing on the carbon tax side and whether you like the uh, or not, uh, I think I give them high marks uh, last spring for having said, look, these are two issues with a lot of complicated policy, uh, some consultations that need to go on uh, in the industry. Let's name a panel here. Let's give them six months or so to think through uh, what a new royalty regime is going to look like. They appointed very credible people 
to both the royalty review panel and to the carbon uh, management uh, greenhouse gas panel. Uh, the greenhouse gas panels reported out, you know, whether you like what <coughs> the panels come up with or not, uh, that was a very credible process to make sure that at least they all the relevant players. Uh, uh, here, uh, unless they want to have a very drawn out uh, political battle over Christmas and into January and February, uh, I think somebody in Edmonton at some point's got to got to put put this on a, 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 a take the same path they took with the uh, with the uh, royalty reform for oil and gas. There are some bring some credible people into the process, clear up some of the communications problems, uh, communicate, think through a little bit more carefully what the intention of this legislation is, and uh, and talk to some of the people who are going to be affected by it. So tomorrow, Ian Brody is the chief of staff for Rachel Notley. Is that the exact advice you're giving her? Yes, you take advantage of it. Look. When I was working for Mr. Harper, we had a minority government. We didn't know whether we were going to be back into an election from week to week or month to month. And so, you know, we had to have pretty tight management on uh, on, on issues that not raise, no, not uh, start off on new policy issues that we weren't sure we could we could have some success on. Uh, boy, if I'd had four years with a majority government uh, uh, guaranteed, we, we would have, I think we would have... Uh, T- t- taken advantage of the fact that we had some secure tenure and uh, and start to put some of these things on a, on a on a more consultative track. Well, Ian, thanks a lot for joining us today, and hopefully we can talk to you again in the future about uh, some politic issues. For sure, Sean. Good to talk to you.